Hello and welcome to this video on using the bisection method for finding the roots of a cubic function. We can use the bisection method for any continuous function, but in this particular video we're going to use a cubic function as an example. Before we move on to talk about cubic functions, let's quickly talk about quadratic functions. Um, here's an example where we have the function y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. And I'm sure you're all aware that we can represent a quadratic function. It would look something like this. And the roots of that quadratic function would be where the function crosses the x-axis. Now, for a quadratic function, we can factorise the expression to find those roots, or we can use the quadratic equation. When it comes to a cubic function, however, the mathematical methods to find the roots become a lot more difficult. And one of the reasons we can use the bisection method is because it doesn't involve any complicated mathematics, but it does involve a lengthy step-by-step -step approach to converge on the root of the function as an approximation. We're going to see that in an example here. So we call the bisection method an iterative approach because we're going to move through several iterations each time getting closer and closer to the actual result. So unlike the quadratic example we saw previously, where we could use something like the quadratic formula to get an immediate answer in, in, in one step, here we're going to have to move through several steps, and each time we're going to get closer and closer to the actual root or roots of the equation. Let's take this cubic expression as an example. We have y equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 3. And let's suppose that we know that this function crosses the x-axis somewhere between 0 and 3. But we don't know exactly where. Let's show that that's the case first of all by using our equation here and substituting those two boundaries, uh, x equals 0 and x equals 3. So starting with x equals 0, we can say that y equals 0 cubed minus 2 times 0 squared plus 0 minus 3. And in that case, y will come out as minus 3, because all of those x terms are 0. And then we have our upper boundary where we said x equals 3, and in that case we would see that y equals uh, 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 squared plus 3 minus 3. And in that case uh, y comes out as 9. So what we see in this instance is, uh, if I just draw a quick sketch again, when x was 0, we see that y is a negative number. y is minus 3. So I don't have a, a scale on my axis, but somewhere down here, say. And then when we have x equals 3, uh, so somewhere up here, say, y is a positive number, uh, it's 9, so let's say somewhere up there. So given these two points, we know that whatever shape our function is, it must cross the x-axis between these two points. So at this point, the term bisection comes into play. We're going to bisect the range of 0 to 3 that we've seen here, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the middle point. And so the centre of our range, or the um, midpoint, is going to be 1.5 in this instance. And so we're going to evaluate the function again at that midpoint of 1.5. So again, we have our function of y equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 3. And substituting 1.5 in this time, we get a result of minus 2.625. So at this point, let's revisit our sketch here 
because we've evaluated the function um, of x at, at x equals 1.5 and we found that it's still a negative number and so we'll we'll mark that on the sketch somewhere around there and so what we can see hopefully is from our sketch the um, place where the function crosses the x-axis is not between 0 and 1.5 uh, because we're, we're negative at 0 and we're still negative at 1.5, where we cross the x-axis must be somewhere between uh, 1.5 and 3. And so what we're going to do is continue this approach. We're going to disregard this section here between 0 and 1.5. We know that the root is not going to lie in that region. We're going to bisect again uh, between 1.5 and 3. And again, we're going to take the midpoint between 1.5 and 3. And in that instance, uh, we're going to get a value of x that is going to be 2.25. So if we evaluate the function again, when x is 2.25, we'll have 2.25 cubed minus 2 times 2.25 squared plus 2.25 uh, minus 3 and we'll squeeze our result on the end here that comes out as 0 0.515 625 so notice now that we have a positive result um, again returning to our little sketch at the top here We've evaluated at x equals 2.25, and we've got a result that's positive. And so now, again, we can disregard a certain region, this region between 2.25 and 3. This, um, this range here is not where we cross the x-axis. It must be somewhere between 1.5 and 2.25. So again, hopefully you get the idea. We're going to bisect again at the midpoint of 1.5 and 2.25. So the midpoint between those two values comes out as 1.875. And so evaluating the same function again, um, where x equals 1.875, we get a result of minus 1.56445. We're going to continue through some more iterations in just a moment, but let's just remind ourselves of the objective here. We're trying to find the roots of the equation, and the roots of the equation will be when the function crosses the x-axis, and when the function crosses the x-axis, y will be zero. And so what we're really trying to do is we're trying to converge on a value of x that gives us a, a value of y that is as close to zero as possible. We'll, we'll never quite get to zero uh, perfectly, but we'll get acceptably close for the number of iterations that we're going to attempt. So let's remind ourselves of where we are, because in the previous section, we looked at the iterations of 1.5, where x equals 1.5, and we found that that gave us a negative answer. I'll just put a little negative there. And we also took the iteration um, where x was 2.25 and we found that the function was positive then. And then what we've just done here is, I'll slot it in the middle here, we've just done uh, the iteration where x equals 1.875 and we found that result to be negative. So again, uh, I've not got a graph sketched on this slide, but we can see, hopefully, that x remains, uh, y remains to be negative when x is 1.5 uh, to 1.875. We haven't crossed the x-axis between these two values, but we have crossed the x-axis between these two values, between 1.875 and 2.25. And so again, we're going to bisect the midpoint between 1.875 and 2.25. So halfway between these two values, um, if I just uh, note that in here, we're going to find the midpoint between the two, 
which is going to be 2.0625. And so we're going to do another iteration um, where x is uh, 2.0625. And we see something like this. And in this instance, we still get a negative result. So again, our um, x-axis doesn't cross between um, 1.875 and the midpoint because the lower bound, 1.875, was negative. Uh, what we've just found here has also given us a negative result, uh, minus 0 0.671631. But the uh, function must cross the x-axis between this midpoint and the upper bound, which was 2.25, because we've gone from a negative result, um, evaluating when x was uh, 2.0625, and a positive result, remember, when x was 2.25. And so again, what I'm going to do is take the midpoint again. I'm going to take the midpoint between uh, 2.0625 and 2.25. And so we'll write that out here. Um, and we'll say that x is going to be, this time, 2.15625, which is the midpoint of those two values. And we evaluate that result and get a result of minus 0.117279. So hopefully you can see that we are converging closer and closer to a value of zero as a result of these iterations. Okay, so before we get carried away, let's just recap and try to visualize what we've done so far. And we'll use this, this sort of number line um, as a way of doing that. So we started out knowing that our root lies somewhere between zero and three. And we evaluated the function at zero and found that it was negative. What I'll do is I'll just draw a, a downward arrow to represent that we got a negative result and an upward arrow for a positive result. I'm not drawing this vertically to scale at all. Uh, and we got a positive result here at three. So then we said, well, let's bisect. We took the midpoint, 1.5, and we found that at 1.5, we got a negative result too. So our function must cross between 1.5 and 3. Um, so we bisected uh, again to get our midpoint here at 2.25. Uh, by the way, to find uh, the midpoint very easily, it's just to take the mean of um, our upper and lower bounds. So for instance, uh, 1.5 plus 3 all over 2 gives us the the midpoint, 2.25 there. Um, and we found that at 2.25, we got a positive result. And so therefore, our root must lie somewhere between 1.5 and 2.25. So we bisected uh, to get the midpoint, which was 1.875. And there we got a negative result as well. And that means that the um, function must cross the axis between 1.875 and 2.25. And so we worked out our midpoint of 2.0625. And finally, we bisect it again um, to get x equals 2.15625. And we found that the function was also negative at that point as well. So things are starting to get a little bit cramped on our diagram here because the root of our equation must lie somewhere between these two points here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of imagine that we um, are going to zoom in here and expand a new lumber line that um, focuses on this area. So when we see that close up, as it were, we've got this range here where we're looking at this um, 
range between 2.15625 and 2.25. And what we found was that our result at 2.25 was positive, and our result at 2.15625 was negative. And so again, we're going to bisect the result here, um, somewhere in the middle, about there. And our midpoint is going to be, in this case, uh, 2.20313. So I'll write that on here. And what we're going to do is, again, evaluate the function. I'm not going to write out the full working. In this instance, I'm sure you get the idea by now. But we'll say that at uh, x equals... 2.20313 we will find y equals 0.189045 and so that's a positive result that we have there so again, repeating this process, in theory, we could continue this forever. We'll never quite get to zero, but we'll converge on zero. Um, we're going to maybe do another three steps to get something that's in the order of uh, times 10 to the minus three, maybe, um, to something that's acceptably close to zero anyway. So the midpoint of our um, new range here is going to be somewhere... Uh, between 2.15625 and 2.20313, and that's going to be 2.17969. And again, we can evaluate the function at that point, and we find that it comes out as 0 0.0334059. Uh, we don't have to be this precise necessarily, but... Um, it helps when calculating the midpoints to use the um, as many decimal places as possible. Um, a positive result we have there. And so what we're going to do is take now the midpoint between 2.15625 and 2.17969 because we have a negative here and a positive here. And we find that that midpoint, if we can squeeze it in, is going to be, uh, let's write it above here, it's going to be uh, 2.16797. And again, evaluating the function at that value gives us a negative value of uh, minus 0.04. 25552 and we'll do one more step maybe um, we'll see here that our function has uh, given us a negative result here um, whereas we had a positive result at 2.17969 and so our final midpoint is going to be uh, we'll squeeze it in here. Uh, I won't write the number there. I'll write it below. Our midpoint is going to be 2.17383. And that function evaluates to minus 0 0.0047293. Uh, we'll leave it there, but hopefully you can get the idea that we can go on forever with this iterative approach. But what you can see now is we've got a result uh, for y that is acceptably close to zero. And so we found that the root of this equation lies somewhere around this value of 2.17383, um, or at least approximately uh, with this iterative approach. So to conclude this video, what I hope will be helpful is to visualize everything that we've done so far. If you remember at the very start of this video, we looked at this function y equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 3. And we found, first of all, our initial bounds of 0 and 3. We found that the function evaluated to minus 3 when x equals 0. 
and to 9 when x equals 3. I hope you can make this graph out. Sorry, I'm, uh, the image is a little bit small. But then we bisect it to um, find x equals 1.5. And we continued bisecting. And what you can see is that we converged on the root of the equation here, getting closer and closer to a value of x that's going to give us a resulting value of y as close to zero as possible. And the value of x where we stopped there was x equals uh, 2.17383. Now, if we actually evaluate this um, or solve this equation uh, computationally, say, the accurate answer comes out as x equals 2.17456. And so actually, the result that we found just using this iterative approach, not, not involving any complex mathematics, um, is, is reasonably close to our more accurate result here. So I hope you found this video useful as an introduction to the bisection method and seeing how we can use the bisection method to find the roots of different functions. And hopefully what you can also see is that the bisection method doesn't involve any complicated mathematics. We've just been substituting numbers into the original equation. But by following that iterative approach, we can eventually converge on a reasonably accurate result.